Critical Path Analysis Critical Path Analysis is one of the areas of business studies that many people find difficult. However, actually the concept is really simple to understand. It may be just that you need to watch it through maybe once, twice or three times. Hopefully in this tutorial, once you've reviewed the process of Critical Path Analysis, you'll understand it. It could be a good tool to use to show your class if teaching this concept as well. OK, so what is Critical Path Analysis? Well, critical path analysis is a process that's used to find the most cost-effective way and the quickest way of completing a project. It's typically constructed through a diagram. A typical morning for Mr. Business B. He'll get up out of his hive and it'll take five minutes. He then goes to his kitchen and he switches on his kettle. He'll then go and make a cup of coffee which will take four minutes. Before he wants to switch on his computer which takes one minute. He needs to log into his computer that takes one minute. And then he needs to take his cup of coffee to the computer and check out bbusinessb.co.uk. Now what you need to think about here is, which of these tasks can you do alongside each other? What is the most efficient way of doing these tasks? You may want to pause the video now and have a think about this. Jot it down on paper because we'll come back to this in a minute. You may want to pause the video now. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a diagram using our example before. But first we need to understand what goes into a critical path analysis diagram. We have these things called a node. Now a node, firstly, is actually not a task. It is a node. It very clearly says that. You will also have every node will be topped and tailed by what's called arrows, strangely enough, and they are tasks. So every node has an arrow before and an arrow after, unless it's a starting node or the finishing node. Now, in the node here you can actually put your node number and then you'll have what we call your early start time that goes in there. Now that's the early start time the next task can begin. So for example if we're looking at the diagram I've got on the screen here the next task beginning it will be this task over here. So the early start time that this task here can begin. And then of course we have our latest finishing time. Now that's the latest finishing time that the task before can finish at this task here that leads into it because we can't start this task until that task is finished and that is all our diagram is made up of our CPA diagram is made up of arrows and nodes and it's really really simple okay now remember it's really really important that a node goes at the before and after every task unless and this is the only proviso unless it's the beginning node or the end node so now let's try and draw a diagram and let's see how it looks in a diagram. Okay, here was our typical morning. So we are going to try and draw a critical path diagram. You hopefully have thought the most effective way of doing this task. So we could do some jobs alongside each other. So some jobs, for example, I can get up, I could then go and switch on my kettle and make a cup of coffee. But whilst I'm doing that, I could also go and switch on the computer, log on to the computer and then come back together to take my cup of coffee to the computer and do check out my website bbusinessb.co.uk so I'm going to try and put that into critical path so let's take a look at critical path analysis diagram as you can see I've drawn the diagram out to show you where the nodes and where the arrows will go remember the arrows are tasks and the nodes are just figures of time what you can see I've done with every arrow I've also put a task length on there so you can see you've got the five minutes the two minutes, the one minutes, the four minutes, the one minutes and the ten minutes now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this in. Now we're going to work on this idea where it says in green there by the early start time is the EST. We're going to do that by moving forward. So we're going to calculate our early start time first. Then when we get to the end we're going to go back and then we're going to do our latest finishing time. So let's start with our first node. What is the time we can start our project with? All projects are going to start with a figure of time. Hopefully you're going to work this out of a zero. We start with nothing. And then we're going to finish, aren't we, the same task. So let's be honest, we're going to have our first node. It's going to start with zero, and it's going to finish with zero. So there we go, zero, zero. And now let's work our way through this project. So we start with zero. It's going to take five minutes. So what is going to be the early start time of this next task here? Well, it's going to be five minutes, because zero plus five gives us five. Let's move forward again. Let's do this way now. So let's go five plus our two minutes is going to give us seven minutes. 7 plus 4 will give us 11 minutes. And now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do 11 plus 10 gives me 21 minutes. Now, let's go backwards. Let's use our formula to go backwards. So, we're just going to go backwards at the moment. So, there we go. Our latest finishing time over here has got to be the same as this one we're going to here. So, we're going to have 21 again. 
And let's go backwards. 21 minus 10 gives me 11. 11 minus 4 gives me 7. 7 minus 5 gives... So, 7 minus 2 gives me 5. What do you notice about those nodes? Hopefully you've worked out they're all equal. Now, that's really, really important. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's not that exciting. So, let's have a look at this node that we've left out down here. Let's try and it this way. So, let's do a forward again. 5 plus 1 would give us 6. So, you happy with that so far? Now, 6 plus 1 would give me 7. I've used 11 there, and it's really important why. Because you've got two numbers here. Now, you use the highest number going forward, because remember, the early start time is what time can this task start? Well, it can't start until this task here is finished, the longest task. You can't start until the last, the latest task is actually finished. And that's 11, not 7 minutes. So that's why we always use the highest number. Now, if we go backwards now, 11 minus 1 gives me 10. And our nodes, in this case here, is different. And that's really important. That's because we've got something that's called float time. We've got spare time. And that's not on our critical path. So let's have a look at how this works here. Oh, actually, I should show you first before you get, so you don't get confused. 10 minus 1 would give you 6. Now, in this case here, you're going to use the 5, the lowest number. Use the biggest number going forward. You're going to use the lowest number going back, the latest finishing time. So let's have a look. Critical path. As you can see, the critical path is always where the nodes are equal. So in this example here, we mark all the tasks on the critical path with the red arrow because they're the tasks. And you can see the nodes always balance out equal. Now, the critical path are the tasks which have to be completed to ensure the project finishes on time because there's no free time. These are critical to the overall success of the project. If we were to delay one of the tasks on the critical path, so maybe change the time, make it a bit longer, this could have an impact on the overall finishing time of the overall project because it's critical to success. It could even move the critical path. In some cases, you may have more than one critical path. Now, the way to check to see if you got this correct in the exam, if you were constructing one of these, which is very unlikely because you're more than less able to have to interpret one or maybe have to complete one, would be you could see if the path actually flows all the way through. So you should always have a path that goes from the start to the finish. If you've got a node that's missing, so you've got a start line, and let's say you've got a line here somewhere, you know you've gone wrong. It's got to run throughout the whole project. Now, the other thing you may be asked to do is to calculate the float time. Now, you need to learn this formula, which is the LFT, minus the task length, minus the EST. And what that is, that's calculating the float time, the free time. Now, on the critical path, all the tasks on the critical path have no float time, because they're critical. There's no spare time. Whereas the tasks off the critical path do have float time, they do have free time. So let's look at an example. Let's set this one for example here, this task here. So if we do the LFT, the latest finishing time is 7, minus the task length, which you know is 2, which gives us 5, minus the early start time 5, gives us 0. And that gives us no free time, as you'd expect, it's on the critical path. Whereas, let's do the one down here. So, let's look at this task down here, this free, this task here. Let's see how much free time there is down here. Now, this should have free time, because it's not on the critical path. The latest finishing time is 10. It takes 1, so that's 9. 9 minus the 5 gives us 4. There are 4 minutes of free time. So, that means that you can delay this task here by up to four minutes and it'll have no impact on the project. If you delayed it by four, it'd actually become part of the critical path because it'll go back to having a float time of obviously zero. But everything else is perfectly fine. If you delayed it by five minutes, for example, though, the whole critical path would move. And then the critical path would probably go down like that and across like that. Now, what I suggest you do is actually have a go at doing this. Draw out my diagram and actually change some of the numbers and see how it affects the critical path. Move it around. The best way to practice is to actually have a go at doing it and see what the impact is going to be. Okay, so you're probably going to be asking the exam about benefits and drawbacks. Typical advantages of critical path are it helps to reduce a product length because you can actually work how long a project is going to be and then you can try and work out the most efficient way of utilising your resources. It helps you to better ensure that you can use a JIT system so you can plan when you want to use your resources and get your products to arrive at your workplace or maybe in your building site if you're doing it on a building site it ensures that you actually are not tying up your capital in stock which of course can help with your cash flow and it also ensures you haven't got workers hanging around not doing anything for a while while one project's completed so it gives you a better use of your resources 
However, on the drawback side, it tends to be time consuming and it can be quite complex to construct these CPA diagrams, especially the more advanced they get. They tend to be based on forecasted data and on the experience of the person who actually conducts the analysis. So if the person's got lots of experience and it may be more accurate than somebody who's just been asked to draw this because nobody else could do it in the workplace and it thinks like a good idea to work out a CPA diagram. And of course it doesn't take into account any external factors. So it doesn't take into account factors such as the weather, traffic jams, or maybe even just simply seasonality. So you, you need to factor in some of these other elements that may get in the way and have an impact on your overall project. Because, for example, when I mention seasonality, I'm talking about like on a building site, you know, in the winter it, you have less hours to work, for example, or legislation may mean you can't build after four o'clock. So you've got to consider all these factors into the overall project. And of course you need to keep constantly reviewing this and it takes time and it takes money to do that. Okay, that's it. You should now be able to construct and complete a critical path di analysis diagram. You should be able to mark on the critical path and calculate float time. Okay, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitter, which is at BBusinessB, or check out my YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. You can also tweet me any areas of business you want me to cover in the future. And don't forget to check out my website with lots of resources on there, which is bbusinessb.co.uk. A good way to practice a CPA is to either check out some of the resources on my website, or have a go yourself, just change some of the diagrams and the numbers that are on there and it'll help you to be able to work out your diagram and do your float time as well. Thanks for joining me and I hopefully catch one of you catch you soon on one of my other videos.